One of the most difficult things to do is find yourself in a storm. And while in that storm, it seems like everyone who you thought you could count on has, has walked away. And sometimes it seems like even God himself has forgotten about you. But in spite of that, to still be able to lift your hands and say, Lord, I trust you. I surrender to you So many painful thoughts Travel through my mind And I wonder how I will make it through this time Everything that I see Tells me not to believe But I'll trust you, Lord You have never It happened to me 10 years ago. Yeah. I can only trust you. No one loves like you. Do. But it's the thoughts in my mind. So many painful thoughts. Travel through my mind. And I wonder, I wonder how I will make it. I will make it through. Oh God, but I trust you. I'll trust. Lord, it's not easy. Sometimes the pain in my life, oh God, it makes you seem so far away. Can I get a witness, somebody? But God, I trust you. Through the tears, anybody ever had to cry late in the midnight hour? Every tear you've had to cry, through the heartache and rain. Come on, take it out through the tears. Oh, that's right, through the heartache. Listen, somebody's going through something right now, and the devil's trying to convince you that there's no way you can make it out, and he says you're not going to be able to get out of this situation, but I wish somebody would make the devil out of a lie right now and lift your hands and say, God, I will trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to show up, but God, I know you're going to do it. God, I know you're going to bring me out. Come on, if that's you, come on, lift your voice and say, I will. Oh, that's right. I'll trust you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I don't know when the pain's going in, but I know, God, you wouldn't put more on me than I can bear. So I trust you in spite of what I see, in spite of what I'm going through. I trust you. God, you've never left me. I know you love me. That's why I trust you. God, you still kept me. Oh, God, you're faithful. You see what I'm going through. You know my pain. I trust you. It's not easy for me. God bless you and welcome to another episode of Handle It. I'm your host, Bishop Marcus Campbell. I'm excited because you have tuned in to the right station at the right time because God is getting ready to bless your life. On tonight, we want to talk about a particular theme that all of us can relate to, and the theme is strong enough to live. All of us need strength to be able to make it through the day, through the week, through the month, through the year, because of the various circumstances and situations of our lives. But there's a focus text that I want to utilize on tonight before I introduce our special guest. It's found in Matthew chapter number 24, verses 12 through 13. And I'm going to give you the New Century version of the Bible. It says, there will be more and more evil in the world, so most people will stop showing their love for each other. But those people who keep their faith until the end will be saved. And I need you to know on tonight, my brother, my sister, that your faith 
is literally the strength that's given you uh, the motivation that you need to continue to live. On tonight, I have a phenomenal, dynamic woman of God who has a story that she's going to share with us, her testimony and some techniques that she has utilized herself to, to let us know how she fought through life and learning to have strength enough to live. I want to introduce you all to Sister Judith, known as also Judy Smith. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Bishop. God bless Thanks you. For thank you for me. being here. It's an honor to be here and I thank you. It's an honor to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I am a mother of two sons. Um, I have two granddaughters, three and four. Um, I am a 1985 graduate of Virginia State University. Amen. Amen. I have been employed on my job for 23 years. My goal is to retire in five. The goal is to retire in five. I believe you're going to retire in five. three, knowing you. I receive that. <laughs> in Jesus' name. I receive that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and, and, and having uh, accomplished all of this uh, in such a short amount of time, and I still say a short amount of time because you are a young woman, um, you've endured some challenges. Yes, I have. What, yes, what, what, I have. What, what, what are some of the challenges that you endured uh, with trying to accomplish all that you've accomplished as being a mother, being a professional, graduating from Virginia State University, and still maintaining who you are as a diva. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bishop Campbell. Um, before I became a mother, I was a wife. I was married for 18 years. Um, four years into that marriage, I had my first son. And during that time, it, 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 was a, it was everything that everybody wanted when they first get married. Mm. Things are going well. You know, you have the husband. American dream. Yes, the American dream. I'm finally married. I'm out of my parents' house. I'm married. Um, the child comes, and it, being a new mother was a challenge. However, you know, I still maintain being a wife, faithful wife. I went back to work. And during the course of that marriage, things got a little... Rocky. When I say rocky, um, things change. Things change. Things change. So was it the child that made things change, or was it the fact that the marriage has just became normal? It wasn't the child. It wasn't the child. What what I happened? I feel it wasn't the child. Um, there wasn't a dedication there any longer. I feel like there wasn't a dedication between me and my spouse. Um, things got a little abusive. Verbally abusive? First we start out with um, <clears throat> verbal abuse. Um, you know, many people don't feel that verbal abuse is true abuse, you know that? Yes, it is. M many people feel that just because someone elevates their voice or they call you out of your name, that they're, near, they're really not verbally abusing. They, you, you, you know that? that there's, there's somebody else that's out there who thinks that just because somebody yells at you, that, that it just means that they became emotional. But you're, you're terming that as abuse. Why? Right. When we're looking at abuse, people um, sort of get it, I'm going to say twisted. Twisted. <laughs> twisted. Verbal abuse is also domestic violence. Mm. When people think of domestic violence, they think of physical Yes. That someone has to be beating on you. Yes. However, there's different forms of domestic violence. Mm. There is the physical. Yes. There is mental. Yes. And then there's verbal. Yes. It's also emotional. Emotional. Yes. That's when somebody's playing with your emotions. Emotional. When they're when they're pretending to love you, but they really don't love you. Yes. Yes. However, but, but, but it's yours, all domestic violence. It's all domestic violence. It's all. So domestic so four violence. years into the marriage, you've birthed a child. Mm -hmm. You're going back to work, and now all of a sudden. Domestic violence has found your address, mm -hmm. and you're beginning to live with verbal abuse. Right. Right. H how did you handle that? How did you take it initially? Initially, I was hurt, very hurt, um, because this was my husband, and I knew that, no, you, you should not be talking to me like that. Right. So initially, it was hurt. But as it continued, I got angry. Mm -hmm. So did you ever talk to him about it? Did you ever say, listen, the words you're saying, they, they hurt my feelings, they make me feel 
uh, dehumanized, dogmatically, you're, you're degrading me? I mean, did you ever no, communicate not really. that? We didn't communicate. I didn't communicate Why not? that with him. At that point, I, I didn't want to even talk about it. Right. I felt most victims say it's, it's going to go away. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. You know, we are all overworked. We have a child, so, you know, it will go away. So, so victims of domestic violence start making excuses for their situation. Yes, they do. They always say it's going to get better. Did it get better? No. No, it did not get better. It, it got better for a while, and that's what happens. For a while, you know, it gets better. It gets better. But then again, it will come back. Mm. So how did it come back at you? It came back at me. Verbal went to physical. My Lord, the worst kind. The worst kind. The worst kind. Physical. And when I say physical, it wasn't really, it was a push here, mm -hmm. a push there. But you have to realize that a push here and a push there, eventually it's going to, it's going to happen. Something gonna else escalate. is going to happen. Yes, something else escalate. will happen. You yes. know, and one of the things that I want to interject here is that <clears throat> in between the verbal abuse and the pushing, there was a constant battle of your emotions as well as your mentality, your mindset, because you're going through the questioning process of why is he talking to me like this? Why, why is the, 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 and this is not just for, for men, because there are men yes. who are victims of domestic violence as well yes. as women. Yes. And so there's, there's the question, why is my spouse talking to me like this? Why, well, you know, maybe they don't love me. And this is where the emotional abuse comes into play. Did, did you go through that, those phases? I constantly ask myself, okay, what am I doing wrong? Mm. You constantly ask that question. What am I doing wrong? What can I change? And then in the back of your mind, you're saying, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm here. I'm doing the necessary things, household chores. Yes. I am taking care of my son. Yes, doing your wifely duties. Wifely duties. So what, what is the problem? And he never gave you a problem. No. Everything was the problem. Everything was the problem. I said everything was the problem. You, you get to the point where you, you're like, well, nothing is right. Nothing is going to be right. So you stayed. Why? I stayed because that's what I was supposed to do as a wife. I'm sorry. Forgive I me. I came I from a family where there is always, there's a father, there's a mother, there's children. You stay with your family. You raise your children because they have to have a mother and they have to have a father. So regardless of how your spouse talked to you, you had to stay you, there. You stay. You stay. Regardless of the push, you had right. to, to, to stay. Right. And I did not want to be a failure. I wanted to say, okay, I can make this work. This has to work. By this time, I had two boys. I said, I have to be here. You know, they can't come from a broken home. My Lord. They have to have both parents. So you were willing to endure the domestic violence just so that you wouldn't feel like you were failing yourself and Myself your children? Myself and my children. My God. Yes. So the pushing, did it stop at the pushing? I mean, did we, did, is, that, is that the... No, there was more than pushing. There, there, it, there were times when there were, there were licks, I should say hits. But I never would fight back. Why not? I, I, mean, never, you, I never would fight back. I, I, I just said, okay, it's, it's okay. I, I just never would fight back because I felt like if I fought back, then it would be uh, more. It would be more aggressive. It, it would become worse. It would, it would become worse, yes. And so your children are there. Your, your husband is now being aggressive towards you. You've rationalized mm -hmm. in your mind, I've got to stay here. Mm -hmm. Was there at any point in time when you said enough is enough? Yes, I did. As my children got older, especially my older son, um, when I saw that he was getting very agitated, and there was one, there was one incident that my son actually got involved. Wow. And it was at that point that I knew I couldn't do it anymore. Because at this point, I knew that it was affecting my children. Right. All along, I, I, I knew it was affecting them. 
but I just didn't want to 